All right, we've seen that the partition function for an ideal gas allows one to derive the ideal gas equation of state through manipulation of that partition function. Let's now consider a van der Waals gas. So the partition functions that I'm showing here are the ones that we have worked with up till now, and I've told you are consistent with an ideal gas, and in particular a monatomic ideal gas I, I mentioned. So let's consider a different partition function. Namely, no change in the ensemble partition function. It's still the case that it's a molecular or atomic a partition function raised to the nth power divided by n factorial, but some changes in the individual partition function here, it still contains this 3 halves power, 2 pi mass of the particle divided by Planck's constant squared beta, multiplied times volume minus number of particles times some constant, positive constant r, multiplied times the exponential of s times beta times number of particles divided by volume. All right, so that these extra terms then cause this molecular partition function to be different from this one. So I'll give you a moment to think about uh, that difference and make sure that you appreciate when that may make a difference in properties and expectation values. Good. So we've seen that in the special case of n going to zero, that is the gas becoming infinitely dilute, uh, this term would simply become volume as it was for the ideal gas. This would go to e to the zero is one. So we would recapture the ideal gas molecular partition function as we go to infinite dilution, just as we should for a real gas. So that's comforting. One might say this partition function passes the smell test. It, it achieves the right limit at high dilution. All right, so uh, let's look at the pressure. Remember that the pressure is kT times the partial derivative of the log of the partition function with respect to the volume. And so we'll expand log of the ensemble partition function, just as we've done for the ideal gas, but there are some new terms. So all these terms we saw before. Now, where for the ideal gas, we had n log v. Now we have n log quantity v minus nr. So that's this piece. We also have a log of an exponential. So that just becomes the argument of the exponential. So here you have it, s beta n squared over v. And then finally, the log n factorial term, which has always been around. So we'll put that on the next slide so we can continue to work with it. And now we need to differentiate this with respect to v. And when we do that, here's a term that depends on v. It's a logarithm, and so we'll get 1 over the argument. It's multiplied by n, so I get n divided by v minus n times r. Here's another term that depends on v. It goes as v to the minus 1, so when I differentiate, I'll get a term in negative v to the minus 2. And so here it is, the negative sign and 1 over v squared. Now that I have that in hand, I can finish solving for the pressure. And so since pressure is kT times that partial derivative, and this was the partial derivative we just did from the last slide, I rearrange that. I get pressure equals nKT over v minus nR. Here I'm multiplying kT times beta. Beta is 1 over kT, so it just goes away. I'm left with only Sn squared over V squared. And I can rearrange that a bit. I'll move this uh, term over to the other side, so I'll get P plus Sn squared over V squared. I'll multiply both sides times V minus Nr. So here's the multiplication over here, and that eliminates the denominator over there. And finally, if I use Avogadro's number of particles, so I'm working with one mole, and I express s and r as different constants that are in molar units instead of units appropriate for molecules. Then, because it's working with one mole, it'll be the molar volume that's involved in this expression. I've switched s and r to a and b because they are now molar quantities. And that's the van der Waals equation of state. 
So that selection of partition function, which I did just present sort of deus ex machina, but in any case, it's clearly consistent with the van der Waals equation of state. So given that equation of state, we should be able to do many things with it. And in fact, I think I will let you uh, spend a moment and look at what the internal energy of a van der Waals gas should be. All right. Hopefully you're gaining more experience with manipulating these partition functions and doing the necessary partial differentiations. And you saw the difference between the ideal gas and the van der Waals gas when it comes to the internal energy. So we're going to continue exploring partition functions, but now we're actually going to look more carefully at the ensemble partition function as opposed to the individual molecular partition functions that have occupied our time for the last two videos.